Ironside and Dragnet 1970 will not be presented so that we may bring you the following special program. Now, a special program in living color on NBC. Tonight, from the Bob Hope Theater at Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas, Chrysler presents... Bob Hope's special presentation of Roberta. With music by Jerome Kern and book and lyrics by Otto Harbach. With John Davidson as John Kent. Janice Page as Charvenka. Special guest star Michelle Lee as Stephanie. Les Brown and his band of renown. And starring Bob Hope as Huckleberry Haynes in Roberta, a 90-minute special from Chrysler Corporation, makers of Plymouth, Don, Chrysler, Imperial, Dodge Trucks, Zipka, and Sunbeam Automobile. Chrysler Corporation, engineering with care. Susan, hurry! Hurry up! Shh! You wake up, Daddy! What's this? This? Oh, um, hi, Mr. Wilson. I, I, what, what? Oh, this! Oh, see the duster? This is my old new Plymouth duster. I, I just got it. At three o'clock in the morning? No, at the, the dealers. I mean, today, well, y yesterday, that is. It, it's a honeymoon. Oh, I mean, it's a honeyman. And it's big enough, but, it, but it's small enough. Well, well, it can carry a family. Oh, y your whole family. Here, sit inside. And it parks in about three quarters of a parking space. Oh, oh, and listen to that engine. 198 cubes. It's big enough for a good pickup. Oh, and safe passing, but small enough to save on gas. And it has 14-inch tires, torsion bars, unibody. Look out, small economy cars. Here comes Duster. Daddy! And now for Act One, Scene One of Roberta. We take you to the most exclusive dressmaking salon in the world, Madame Roberta's in Paris. No, no, there's something missing. You'd better get Stephanie. Madame, need you. May I be of some assistance, Madame? What are your suggestions, dear? Oh, uh, why don't we sculpt this in chiffon lace to complete the see-through silhouette? Exactly. That's exactly what it needed. Thank you, Madame. And perhaps for contrast, a scarf of uh, crushed satin? Perfect, my dear. Say to Luella, merci. Oui, mademoiselle. Oh, your new designs are exquisite, Stephanie. Without you, I'm afraid I wouldn't have much of a reputation. You know, I'm really just an old fraud. Oh, no, madame. <laughs> oh, let us know. Good morning, Stephanie. Madame Roberta. Yes, yes let us know. Mrs. Teal and her daughter have arrived. Well, show them in. Show them in. I'll see that they're ready in the fitting room. Thank you, dear. May we come in? Ah, Ian, Marsha, welcome to Paris. Thank you, Minnie, darling, thank you. Oh, Minnie, this is my daughter, Sophie. Well, no one need tell me about you, dear. John has written about nothing else for months. But where is my favorite nephew? He's in Paris. But I thought you were coming together. Well, we did come over on the same boat. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Teal. So nice to have you back with us. Hello, Stephanie. Stephanie, this is Mrs. Teal's daughter, Sophie. So very nice to meet you. Thank you. Well, we have a million things to do. Shall we get on with it? <laughs> of course, uh, the models are waiting if you just step into the fitting room. Oh, but darling, you designed these things. I want you in there. I'll be with you directly, madame. <laughs> Don't keep me waiting, please. Stephanie, there is nothing so overwhelmingly 
William Regal, a small town American nobility. <laughs> I do apologize. Oh, please don't, madame. I'm quite used to it. Oh, but I'll never be. Ladislaw Prince working as a doorman and you waiting on the likes of them. We are the more fortunate of our countrymen. You've done so much for us. Oh, but it's not fair. That's all in the past, madame. Part of an age that might never have been. Yesterday's, yesterday's days I knew as happy, sweet sequesters. Golden days, golden days. or rather for the whatchamacallings. <laughs> I'll quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams. Mm. Madame has read me all your letters. You sing real well. Well, I may add that John is not a poet. Madame, Madame, there's a man in a fitting room. Stephanie. Oh, don't worry, Aunt Minnie. Don't worry about a thing. Pock, Pock, come on out of there. I took the scenic route. <laughs> well, you must be Aunt Minnie. Well, well, well. How are you doing? This is Aunt Minnie, oh. if you didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but not really. <laughs> I dig your factory here. If you ever have a one cent sale, let me know, will you? Everybody, this is Huck Haynes. He's a kind uh, of a... band leader, bachelor, part-time sex symbol. <laughs> Huck, Huck. <laughs> That's the way they do it over here. They start with a hand, and later they try for altitude. Well, I'm delighted to meet you. What brings you to Paris? Well, we're here to study the architecture. Will you knock it off? <laughs> if you'll excuse me for a minute, I'll see that the teals are finished. Hey, how about that, huh? Oh, there's so much field work for us missionaries, isn't there, huh? Did you hear what she said? What's that? Sophie's here. No. Well, it's the tourist season. They're letting all the wetbacks in. <laughs> Simply adorable. Oh, John. Mrs. Steele. Hello, John. Hello, Sophie. Why didn't you answer any of my calls? I didn't get any of your messages. But I called your hotel three times. Four. <laughs> Welcome to the Paris Peace Talks. John, get Mrs. Steele a chair. 
And why don't we all have some tea? No thanks, I don't smoke. <laughs> We don't have time for tea, do we, Mother? Oh, no, thank you, Minnie. You see, we have so much to do. You know, we're leaving tomorrow for Greece. Well, I heard Jackie Onassis was expecting, but I didn't think it was you. <laughs> I hope she doesn't hear that or she'll flip me over her shoulder. <laughs> Delivered to the hotel. Thank you, thank you. Hello, Sophie. Sophie, when will I hear from you again? Well, you never know. I often dial a wrong number. <laughs> John, have you tried right guard? <laughs> Left guard, any guard, you need help. <laughs> yeah. The cab drivers, they're getting bugged. Oh, yeah, I forgot the band. Say, I gotta check them in at the hotel. Wait a minute, huh? No, wait a minute. I have to take plenty because there's 18 of them. I may have to get two rooms. There you are. <laughs> well, what did you think of Sophie, Anthony? I'm still shaking. That was the most passionate love greeting I ever saw. We haven't seen each other since she gave me back the ring. We had a terrible fight. A fight? Yes, it was all over a see-through dress. It was just too darn see-through. Well, if that's all it took to break it up, you haven't lost much. I'm trying to forget it, but I just can't. Maybe she'll change her mind. No, I just keep thinking maybe she's too good for a hick like me. Oh, she's a fool. Now, look here. I know what a woman likes in a man, and I'm going to take you in hand. And by the time that little snob gets back from Greece, she'll be chasing you. And maybe then you'll tell her the truth. The truth? Yes, that she's just a crude little American girl with no chic, no allure, no... And many you just don't understand about Sophie. She's lovely to look at, delightful to know, and heaven to kiss. A combination like this Quite my most impossible scheme come true Imagine finding a dream like you She's lovely to look at It's thrilling to hold her terribly tight Oh, we're together, the moon is blue Oh, it's lovely to look at What am I going to do with you? Why, Marvin, why? You're a normal boy. You should have normal desires. Why couldn't you get a big car like your brother, the doctor? Or even a funny little car like your sister, the soldier? No, you had to get a um, 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 banana cooter. Barracuda, Mama. Barracuda. Barracuda, carabuda. So who can tell the way it looks? Like a spaceship and so sporty with those, uh, uh, well, what do you call them? Those torsion barbers for the super suspension? Torsion bars, Mama, for stability. Yeah, you should be so stable. And all these opticals. Options. What's this? A stick slip shifter? That's a slap An overhead shift. constable? Console. And buckling seats? Bucket seats, Mama. And look at those instruments. What are you, an airplane pilot or something? A normal car isn't good enough. You had to be fancy schmancy. Mama, believe me, it makes it. So when are you going to get a haircut? Look at you, believe when me. When normal isn't good enough, Plymouth makes it. Don't leave me here! <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really shouldn't scream at people! 
people like that. But you do not know how they have treated me. That horrible old woman, that, that terrible old witch. Wait, wait a minute, she's my aunt. I know it looks good. Ah, oh, but that little shrew, that Stephanie, that one that runs the business. I happen to like Stephanie very much. What? Yes. You are her lover. No, I'm not a lover. What's wrong with this place? Nobody seems to think about anything but being somebody else's lover. And you do not think of it? <laughs> such arms, such shoulders. Oh, you were made to be the protector of helpless women. Ah, viva la France. <laughs> hey, fellas, look, you haven't had your shots for this type of work. Why don't you go over there? Go look at your postcards. Ah, ah, yeah. Get me out of this. <laughs> well, I'll be happy to. How do you do? Huck, uh, uh, this is Huck Haynes. He's my friend from America. How do you do? Oh, really? <laughs> you can spare this? <laughs> oh, it's finger licking good, I tell you. <laughs> and Huck, this is a. Uh, what? Wow, what was your name? Wait, wait, oh, wait a minute, wait. You don't know the lady? No. Oh, man, what a country. I may never go back to Fort Worth. What a thing. <laughs> The name is Sharvenka. Clementine Sharvenka. You have heard me sing at the Café de Paris. Yeah, and I was in New York at the time. <laughs> well, say, then you two are fellow artists. <gasps> yes, Mr. Haynes here, one is one of America's foremost recording stars. Oh, Ellis. Are you a singer like Bing Crosby? <laughs> Who? You made a record. Something had to happen. Yeah, it sold over a million, mostly to Republicans. <laughs> oh, I will sing it for you. I have it in my repertoire. Yeah, <laughs> what a crazy repertoire. Come on. Come on, honey, I'll play it for you. Go right ahead. I... Oh, oh, oh. oh, there you are, you little devils. There you are. Fight it, John. It's all yours. Go, boy. Something had to happen, so let us take a sensible point of view. Oh. Let us do the things we have got to do. Oh, no. no. Things I am a hot to do. Careful, honey. Take it easy. You may strike oil there. Watch it. Oh, your fingers are touching. <laughs> I am so sorry that I lost my impatience. I will be back again tomorrow for another fit. I wouldn't be in the least surprised. But remember, if you don't behave yourself, my nephew will be here to shake you. Yes, that would be lovely. <laughs> Goodbye, big boy. <laughs> Hey, somebody must be spiking her Wheaties, huh? How can you put up with a woman like that? Oh, she spends a lot of money on dress, and all the right people see her at the Café de Paris. 
Do you know that she actually thought I was in love with Stephanie? Oh, I won't have that, John. Now, I'm not narrow-minded, but not Stephanie, and don't you ever forget it. Listen, you don't have to worry about Stephanie or any of your other girls. You know me better than that. Yeah, you forget a little American girl just rope tied and housebroken. <laughs> And Minnie knows how I feel about Sophie, but what she doesn't seem to realize is Sophie or no Sophie, I'm not about to go fooling around with any of your employees. No, that's my department. I don't fool around. <laughs> but I'm not worried about my girls. But Stephanie, that's different. If I did fall in love with a girl like that, don't you suppose I'd want to marry her? No matter who she was or what she did. The very words that are embroidered on Mickey Rooney's jammies. <laughs> Hey, I don't believe it. They just drafted General Hershey. <laughs> I was wondering, madame, if Stephanie is coming soon. She should be through by now. Why don't you go in the fitting room and see? Thank you, madame. <laughs> Ladislaw always sees Stephanie home. With his bloomers on? <laughs> Now, those aren't bloomers, they're Texas pantyhose. Ladislaw also doesn't care who Stephanie is or what she does. Oh, he's Democratic, too. Ladislaw is a prince. A prince? You're dormant? Yes. And if ever there was such a thing as restoration of the Russian royalty, Ladislaw would be in line for the throne. But miracles just don't happen. Really? Who's going to tell the mess? <laughs> A prince and a seamstress. Sounds like the plot of an old George Murphy movie. But this is one seamstress who will never be a pauper. John, when I die, the building goes to you. But I want to leave the business to Stephanie. And many you have years to think about things like that. Well, let us hope so, John. Let us hope so. But you really don't mind my giving it to her. Of course not. What would I do with a business like this? Mm. Oh, it'd be worth it just to see the headlines. John Kent, All-American Athlete, scores with drawers. <laughs> now, seriously, Aunt Minnie, if you ever do get any such ideas, all I've got to say is thank heavens for Stephanie and good luck to her. You know, I got a few ideas what could be done with a business like this. Oh, am I interrupting? No, we were just seeing if we could switch John from Sports Illustrated to Vogue. <laughs> I could imagine you anything but a couturier. Thank you very much. <laughs> but you didn't finish, Mr. Haynes, and I'm interested in your ideas. Well, I've been thinking about fashion shows. You know, this idea of just having mannequins walking around is a little too stale. It ought to be handled like a real show with a swinging band, beautiful sets, and a narrator who describes the gowns. Who, oh, for instance? Well, I'll check with the band and see if we're available. <laughs> yeah, they're still sitting on the curb. We're available. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid I'm just a little too old-fashioned for anything that modern. But Stephanie may one day be interested in your scheme. I think it's a wonderful idea. Well, young lady, may I congratulate you on your purse capacity. <laughs> I know it's clean. Pat Boone said it. <laughs> and Minnie, aren't you feeling well? Uh, I think I'm going to have to rest now. It's almost 6 o'clock. i better go see about my things. Shall I see you tomorrow? Oh, yes, John, tomorrow. Early? No, not too early. I have a feeling I'll sleep rather late tomorrow. I'm afraid we're tired of you. <laughs> Madam, if you change your mind about my orchestra, will you let me know? Hmm, I'll let you know if I change my mind. Oh, thanks. I'll forget about it, too. <laughs> oh, Stephanie, I I'm sorry about what... I'm sorry about what that... Madam Sharvenka said, did you make, did she hurt you? Oh, no, no. But you cried. Well, I was a little humiliated. Because I tried to protect you? No, I liked that. You did? I mean, it was nice of you to protect me. You didn't think it was too forward? Oh, no, no one would think that of you. Your aunt has told me so much of you, I feel I know all about you. She's fallen asleep. Yeah, she always takes a nap around this time. How do you like my nephew? Madame, I thought you were asleep. I was eavesdropping. But the doctor says you need your rest. Bribe me. <laughs> All right, but just one chorus. John, too. John, 
Thread me my shower room vest. When you shall see flowers that lie on the plain. Lying there, sighing for one touch of rain. Then you may borrow some glimpse of my sorrow. Say goodbye for me. Then you may borrow one touch of my sorrow, and you'll understand. Accustomed to all the finer things in life, we recommend the 1970s Ford Suburban Wagon. Plymouth makes it. There's an air deflector to keep the rear window clean and to keep dust and fumes out. An optional dual air conditioner to cool your rear seat passengers and five speaker stereo to surround them with music. The Sport Suburban Wagon is for a lot of people who want comfort wherever they go. Following the leader doesn't make it. Being the leader makes it. Plymouth makes it. And now, Act One, Scene Two of Roberta. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Bonjour, Monsieur LaRue. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Stephanie. For all of us, this is a very sad occasion. Stephanie, you wanted on the office phone. Oh, all right, thank you. Stephanie, can't that wait? We need you here. I'll be a minute. I must point out to you, Monsieur Kent, that as the will was not signed, his provisions are not in force. I don't care if the will was signed or not. My aunt wanted this business to go to Stephanie. But when there is no will, the law gives everything to you. Oh, no, Monsieur. Did you say there is no will? No. But there is a will. Madame had not signed it. Madame did not sign it. No. I must telephone the bureau. Where is there a telephone? There's one right back there. Merci, monsieur. Pardon. And the law gives everything to you? Yes. But it seems impossible. All these years, Stephanie has worked because of a promise that this business would one day belong to her. Madame would surely have signed her will had not someone persuaded her not to do it. Are you trying to say that I did that? I will not say yes or no, but it seems strange very strange. Get out of here, you're fired. 
The business is mine enough for that. I don't need nobility to run it. I will not go. You cannot get rid of me so easily. You think that there is no one left to protect Stephanie? Stephanie doesn't need your protection. You're fired. You cannot speak so enough. to me just because you... Enough, Marty, enough. How can you quarrel at a time like this? Have you no respect for the dead? It's none of his affair. Stephanie, you understand I mean to give Robertus to you. To give me? I am not in the habit of receiving gifts from strangers. Stephanie. Why you find yourself a new doorman, you can find yourself a new designer, too. No, Stephanie, he shall not kick us out like dirt. Please, Ladislaw. But Stephanie. So, Ladislaw, I will meet you downstairs. Go, please. I'm sorry. I was angry at Ladislaw, so I was cross with you. Please forgive me. Uh, it was very nice what you said about the business, but you must see, as it was not left me, I cannot take it. But it wasn't left to me either. Stephanie, just the other day, your aunt told me that she wanted you to have it. How can I know that? Because I tell you so. You don't have to be a, a half-baked prince to tell the truth. You don't like Gladys Long. I don't like him always hanging around you. What do you see in him? Is it because he happens to be a prince? Perhaps. I see. You needn't be a doorman any longer now that the business is yours. I tell you what might be possible. We might be partners. Partners? Me and the woman's dressmaking business? Not on your life. It's all yours. I will not accept it at all unless you will be my partner. Forget it. That's out. Very well, then I'm out too. Then you will have to be a dressmaker. But I've got a contract with the Rams. Will it net you three million francs a year? It has nothing to... How much? Three million francs, which is five hundred thousand dollars. That much? And a great deal more if we do a good job. Mademoiselle, is this public all right for number 37? Ah, yes, Anna, that's fine, thank you. Oh, wait a minute. What do you think, partner? That's just fine. <laughs> That's great. You'll be a marvelous partner. We may have difficulties at first. We may lose a few customers. Of course. We'll have an opening with a magnificent fashion show. The most daring styles of Paris. <laughs> I won't be very much help. Nobody gives a darn about my taste. Not even Charbenka. Partner. This man is going places, and wherever he goes, he takes along the pleasures of reclining seats, air conditioning, and stereo tape music. Most of all, he's accustomed to power and knows how to use it. There's a car for such a man. The 1970 Sport Fury GT. Plymouth makes it. Fury GT 70, ram 25 and hold. Oh, GT, hold for 707 on runway 3. Runway 3 clear from Plymouth, GT 70. Owning a plane car doesn't make it. Going first class makes it. Plymouth makes it. Plymouth makes it. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present the fashion show, I just want to tell you that we've had a great time here in Paris. You all know Paris. That's where the birds and the bees follow the people and take notes. <laughs> no, my band isn't too well known over here. Very few French couples have radios in their bedrooms. <laughs> and I want to say they like Americans over here. Yesterday, a guy sold me an escargot for $800. <laughs> I thought it was a sports car. <laughs> And everyone here drinks wine. It's quite a sight to see kids on their way to school taking the balloon test. 
These Frenchmen really know how to live. Wine, women, and wine. <laughs> They're the only ones I know who go home for a coffee break. <laughs> it's a wonderful way to live, and it's not a bad way to go either. The average Frenchman is still smiling six months after he's dead. <laughs> But tonight you're going to see the latest fashions from the demure gown for the debutante to the sheer see-through dress for the more worldly type. For the woman of parts who doesn't mind showing them. <laughs> you know, in the past few years we've had minis, micro minis, plunging necklines, backless and see-through models. For the first time in the history a woman could buy a dress and then say, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> Last season the big drought news was paper dresses. It was very handy. I took a girl to a restaurant, spilled wine on her, and I had to take her home in a Bowser bag. <laughs> I guess it's no secret to anybody that Madame Roberta is now under new management. My all-American friend John Kent is now really Roberta. Switching from football to fashion hasn't changed John's life too much, except the huddles are now more fun. <laughs> Every creation you see here tonight is an original. That means it'll be at least a month before you'll be able to buy it at J.C. Penney's in East McKeesport, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and now we present Madame Roberta's collection, the loveliest fashions in the world for the loveliest women in the world. Just a moment, I'll see if the girls are ready. They're not ready. <laughs> Yes, they are. Here we go, and here is our fashion show. This is style number 499, a peekaboo see-through in pink organza over a slinky jumpsuit. This costume is designed especially for the husband who has sworn off tobacco but wants to keep on smoking. <laughs> this charming model is Danielle, who speaks only French but can say no in 10 languages. <laughs> Here we have Sally Sharp, modeling style 522, a floaty filmy cover-up for pajamas in sea blue lame. The waistline is ringed with a jewel belt, a perfect outfit for the girl who has everything or very soon will. <laughs> Next, we have an entry. The models are 428 and 534. First, Jill Curzon in a leopard print safari suit. A fingertip coat covers matching pants and white wool overblouse. And now, Linda Rogers in a leopard printed fabric coat over a pants ensemble in camel wool. There you have it, just the thing for the bachelor's pad. Leopard skin bookends. From our first salon, we have model number 207. This is a mini Martin or little nothing coat. The price is 90,000 francs. That's for the coat, empty. <laughs> the model is Miss Connie Haggard, Miss Texas for 1970. <laughs> little freshman from SMU, huh? you grow up. <laughs> Rebecca Knowles of SMU models number 535. This stunning creation is a maxi coat of green fleece. The flip side is red. Underneath the pants suit features a long tunic. This is the outfit that made Myra Breckenridge change her mind. <laughs> Lovely Martine Caboche, models number 524. This is a floor length evening gown in teal blue crepe with a feathered bolero. Martino, would you fly around the room for us? I may leave a trail of breadcrumbs to my room. <laughs> This is number 223 from our fashion salon. 
a patchwork mink with a white mink collar and with an eye toward the budget-minded, a shoestring belt. <laughs> the minks were so excited when they saw this pattern that they threw themselves on the cutting table. <laughs> the model is Miss Marilyn, Paulette Reck. <laughs> That's a wreck, I'm gonna get me a tow truck. <laughs> Mona Rougier brings us number 426. This new floor length navy coat is a boon to housewives. Wear it in the living room and you'll never have to vacuum. <laughs> it's worn over a natty man's checkered vest and pants. This ensemble is a bit on the expensive side. It's not easy to find checkered sheep. This stunner is number 516, Colette Simia, models of pale green organza trimmed from head to toe like a Christmas tree, with multicolored flowers made of jewels and feathers for the skirt alone. Colonel Sanders plucked almost 4,000 chickens. <laughs> From our first salon, here is number 226. This is a coachman shape, floor length, white mink. I hesitate to mention the price, but for the husband, there's a matching canvas jacket with sleeves to tie behind the back. <laughs> our model is Miss World USA, lovely Gail Renshaw. From Arlington, Virginia. And here we have number 513, a shocking design of slits and sequins that will make your boyfriend feel five years younger and your husband ten years older. Yeah. There you have it, Roberta's collection for 1970, ladies and gentlemen. I just don't like that last gown. I'm sorry. Can you take it out of the line? But why? It reminds me of Sophie at her worst. John, I'd be delighted. Ladies and gentlemen, that last dress has been withdrawn. It is not for sale. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Drinks are now being served, ladies and gentlemen. The last one to the moon is a freak. <laughs> John, you won't look at me, so I had to come over and say hello. Oh, hello, Sophie. John, it's wonderful. The whole thing is wonderful. You really like it? Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, John, I've been such a fool. When can we see each other again? I don't know. What about tomorrow afternoon? Oh, John, I'm so happy. Well, have you seen anything you desire? Yes, I see what I want, but he has already spoken for it. Well, don't give up. The bench is full of rookies. I thought the show was rather good. Rather good, didn't you? Oh, and John, I think your establishment is simply wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and to think he owns it. Yes. Oh. So, Stephanie, you've met my... He means his fiance. Yes. We've met. I think your showing was a great success. Yes, it was a great success. Congratulations, Johnny. Congratulations? She means our engagement. No! Oh, yes. Isn't she lovely? How do you like her? She'll be hard to handle. I promise you that. And if you complain, she's gonna raise Cain and leave you flat. She'll be hard to handle Your bridges are burned The whole thing's a gag And you're in the bag Where she's concerned
Hi, I'm Willie Mays. Here's the kind of cuff you should get in your next car. A five foot wide spread like this. You know, you can even get a split seat that is adjustable, especially for you. With a passenger seat that reclines, a back seat big enough for three adults are your entire outfield. Inside, everyone enjoys Chrysler's new Toshin Quiet Ride. Take it from me, Willie Mays, any car that handles this good, with this kind of quiet, it's gotta be the best thing going. Man, that's my car. And it could be your next car. The 1970 Chrysler Whoop Toshin Quiet Ride. Scene one of Roberta. I will tell you what is wrong. It is too tight. Get Stephanie. Uh, but my God, what is it tight? But I cannot move. I'm in prison. Everywhere it chokes me. I will not have it. I will not have it. You have a beautiful bippy. Oh. <laughs> what is this, a Swedish movie? What's going on here? They make me look like a peel deal. Oh, the ocean's going to be full of happy sharks. I want to tell you that. <laughs> what seems to be the trouble oh, here? Madame is unhappy. Madame is unsatisfied. These are eggs. Gourd. These are eggs. I tell you, reds. I must have another gun for my opening. We'll do our best, Madame. But your best is terrible. That's so allowed. There's a bowling alley next door. <laughs> oh, Stephanie, I have hollered on you. I am ashamed. Well, where's your partner, Princess? I don't understand you. Oh, knock it off, Your Highness. I got the whole scoop. Your blood is so blue, you can give a fountain pen a transfusion. <laughs> I understand they borrow your shampoos for the margarine commercials. <laughs> John. No, and I don't intend to unless the price is right. Why, do you think it might frighten him away? What difference does that make? He's in love with Sophie. No, nah, he thinks he's in love. That's even worse. Well, maybe a princess could change his mind. Perhaps. Is the band all set for tomorrow night? Yeah, but I'm a little nervous about the boys at rehearsal. Three of them showed up sober. <laughs> but I'm sure they'll overcome that. Good morning, Stephanie. Hi, hon. Hey, Madam Roberta Jr., tell me. Let me ask you one thing. You think this jacket would be better if it had a peekaboo blouse, huh? Doc, uh, someday I'm gonna give you such a sock in the nose. If that's what it is. <laughs> you do, and I'll hide your pink and shears. John, you may need a speech for tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? What's tomorrow night? The annual party for the employees. Oh. Well, oh. you're coming up, of course. No, I'm up. With, sorry, I'm, I can't. But it's the party of the year. Oh, you got to. They're flying Truman Capodian just to flip up the zippers on the lamb chops pants. <laughs> That's what I heard. Don't look at me. Well, just I'm to zip up the pants and the lamb chops. That's the way it goes. They're going to do that. Yes, they are. And they're going to make a feature out of it. I can't make it. I, I, I promised Sophie I'd take her to Maxine. I promised Sophie I'd take her to Maxine's. I, I just couldn't disappoint her. I wouldn't have you disappoint her. Of course. See, now Stephanie appreciates her. Stephanie doesn't know her. Oh, Hawk, neither do you. I know Sophie seems cold and sophisticated to strangers, but deep down inside, she's got a very big heart. Must be a transplant. <laughs> You're the only man in the, in the world who doesn't think I'm the luckiest guy around. I know Stephanie thinks, so don't you, Stephanie. John, in my country, we have a proverb that I think all men should study very carefully. A proverb? 
When your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes. They ask me how I knew my true love was true. I, of course, replied, something here inside cannot be denied. Said someday you'll find all who love are blind. When your heart's on fire, you must realize smoke gets in your eyes. So I chaffed them and I gaily laughed to think they could die. Today, my love has flown away. I am without my love. Now, laughing friends deride, tears I cannot hide. So I smile and say, That's just it. But a fellow feels about Sophie the way I feel. He's not blinded by any smoke. What do I do with my hat? You got it on. No, I don't. I'm sorry, the point fooled me. <laughs> it's over there on the other dummy. you two like to go to the devil? Well, if Stephanie's willing, we can go family plan. <laughs> Do you think we made John angry? Oh, your proverb didn't make a hit with him. I didn't think it would. The truth hurts. Only when you recognize it. That's right. Truth has a way of hiding behind false whiskers. I hate whiskers. So do I. My cousin has them and she looks terrible. <laughs> you know any more proverbs? What's the use of repeating proverbs that nobody likes? Well, I liked it, especially the gay parts. So I chaffed them and I gaily laughed To think they could doubt my love Yet today my love has flown away I am without You know, in America, we also have a proverb. Love is like hash. You have to have confidence in it to enjoy it. Entree. Let me get tea, Letitia. Do you want to Sophie. How do you do, Stephanie? How do you do, Miss Teal? Hello, Huckleberry. Huckleberry? I haven't been called that since I was bar mitzvah. <laughs> I want something in a hurry. A dinner gown. I will show you some designs. How soon must you have them? For tomorrow night. Oh, that's impossible. Even if you get someone to work on it tonight? 
Because I'm afraid that's impossible, mademoiselle. I'll speak to Mr. Kent. He'll see that I get it. Yeah, maybe he'll let down the hem on one of his old sweatshirts. <laughs> Show me some design. But certainly. Just a minute. Who does she think she is around here? I don't know what she thinks, but I think she's the whole works. Huckleberry, you're not falling for a dressmaker. Well, you did. <laughs> Well, don't let John hear you say that. Why not? He likes being a dressmaker. Besides, it seems to have turned you on again. Well, you know, Paris has done something to him. His clothes, his manner, his hair. Yeah, when Joe Namath sees it, he'll go ape. <laughs> Here are some designs, but it will take at least a week. Well, that won't do. I must have it for tomorrow night. Haven't you anything made up, a model or something? There is that dress, mademoiselle, the lovely to look at. Oh, I could let her have that one. And why not? I think Mr. Kent will resent the way I'm being treated. I would like to see that model, if you please. Very well, if you insist. I do insist. Anna will show it to you. This way, mademoiselle. Don't go, Huck. I may want your advice. OK, but you know how I hate violence. Why did she want her to have that dress? It would look terrible on her. Besides, John dislikes it. Well, that's that orange job at the show, the one that looks like a direct hit on Orange Julius. <laughs> I promised him I wouldn't show it. And John dislikes it. Oh, she's got to have that gown. But I promised him I wouldn't show it. Anyway, it's all wrong for her. So much the better. The biggest row she and John ever had was over an evening dress and was all wrong for her. Don't you see? I'm beginning to. Well, sell it to her. Come on. Maybe, look, I'll handle the Band-Aid concession. How about that? It won't work. She won't like it. What right have you to be a dressmaker if you can't make a woman take what she doesn't want? No, no. no. I will not take advantage of it. Oh, it's times like this. I'm glad I studied with Don Rickles. <laughs> How could a girl like Sophie land a man like John anyway? Because he's never taken the time to look at another woman. He doesn't even know the 1970s are up. I know. Look how he treats me. I sing from my sad little songs. That's the trouble. You sing him sad little songs. While you're singing smoke gets in your eyes, he's out with the pressure cooker. <laughs> does he sing him sad little songs? I don't know. She does not. She talks to him straight from the shoulder, like your Dutch uncle. But I don't have a Dutch uncle. Oh, I'll be your Dutch uncle. Can you teach me how to talk? Will I? Here's how the girls I know go after what they want. They fix a man with a compelling eye and they say, now that you got me going, what you gonna do? Is it up to me? Is it up to you? What kind of game is this we've begun? Was it done just for fun? We have necked till we're wrecked. Won't you tell me what you expect? Is this to be a case of falling? Glad to tell. Kiss and never tell. Folly and farewell. Which is it gonna be? Love or gin? Wife or sin? Let's be him. I don't think I could learn to talk like my Dutch uncle. Sure you could. Come on, try it. Now that you got me going, what you gonna do? Is it up to me? Sure it's up to you. What kind of game is this we've begun? Was it done just for fun? We have necked till we're wrecked. What is this necking business? Is that something bad? Well, that depends on whether you're Billy Graham or Tom Jones. <laughs> could you tell me? Look, I could show you. Much better if you tell me. Oh, too soon, huh? Well, neck means to make sparks. Groove. Amalgamate. Go Birdsville. Have love, not war. It's a fun in our parents never heard of. <laughs> How they ever had us is a mystery. Oh, I see, but why the net? Well, every freeway has to have an on-ramp. Are you ready? Come on, try it. Now that you got me going, what you gonna do? Is it up to me? Sure, it's up to you. What kind of game is this we've begun? Was it done just for fun? I suspect you'd be wrecked if I answered you quite direct. 
Is this to be a case of falling? Glad you fell. Kiss and never tell. Molly and farewell. Which is it gonna be? Don't like gin. Don't like sin. Wife? Oh, no thanks. A wife would make a mess of your bright young life. Young? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> It's a gas. Do you really like it? Oh, I just wish they had my size. <laughs> and you were so sure it would not become me. Oh, I was wrong. It does become you. It brings out something in you. Elegantly sensuous. Hey, can you move in it? It's lovely to dance it. Well, let's have a go. <laughs> Feels like you got nothing on. <laughs> It's not too long, is it? No. Long dresses don't bother me. I have a good memory. <laughs> I hope you're comfortable in it, mademoiselle. Thank you. You sure you like it, Huck? Oh, I love it. I can hardly wait to see John's eyes light up when he sees me in this. <laughs> Watch his ears. That's where the smoke will come from. <laughs> Uh, what's wrong, officer? Boy, you in a heap of trouble. Violation of city orders 11 Dodge 14, operating direction Dodge vehicle inside the city limits. Oh, officer, this is the new Dodge Challenger RT. It's it's, it's not a racer. Hey, huh? What kind of tires, them boy? Optional polyglass GTs. Racing tires. Have stripes, that boy. What you call those? R racing stripes. <laughs> I suppose that's a reconverted lawnmower motor. Optional 440 Magnum V8. Put that doohickey in that, boy. Well, that's a new optional slapstick racing shift. So look, it's got uh, concealed wipers, and it's got dual headlights. And you don't find that on any racer, do you? Careful, boy. I'll book you as a law officer. If you can handle the way people react to your 1970 Dodge Challenger, you could be Dodge material. Now look, boy, I know a race car when I see one. This Bob Hope special of the musical Roberta, coming to you from Dallas, Texas, will be back following station identification. See the Smothers Brothers, Judy Collins, Gary Puckett, and the Union Gap with Andy Saturday night. And now, Act Two, Scene Two of Roberta. It's just funny how these cab drivers argue with you about the tip the minute they find out you can't speak enough French to even talk back. John, you speak French beautifully. Oh, Tina. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, I still don't feel right about not going to that party. Office parties bore me. We'll stay here. Two singers and make them double. Well, what are you staring at? That dress. Isn't it a knockout? That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. Are you going to start that again? Who sold it to you? Stephanie. Stephanie? I'm sorry I brought the whole thing up, Sophie. It's not your fault. What do you mean it isn't my fault? The fact that the house sold you an ugly dress. You just send it back, that's all. I will not send it back. Shh. It's beautiful. What do you know about clothes anyway? You only make yourself look ridiculous when you talk about them. Sophie, shut up. I will not shut up. This dressmaking business has gone to your head. With all its models and fitters and designing designers. You leave Stephanie out of this. Oh! So that's... So this little partner is a partner in more ways than one. I only wish it were true. What? She's going to marry some prince. Or else you mean it might be you. I haven't got a chance. I suppose if you had, you'd take it. Yes. Yes, I would if you want to know the truth. And let me tell you something else now that we're getting down to cases. You bawled me out for the last time. I took a lot from you because I thought it sounded cute coming from a little snip and because I thought I loved you. Oh, you thought you loved me. Yes, but what a boob you made out of me. Well, that didn't take much effort. 
Next time, I hope you pick somebody worthy of your efforts because that's exactly what you'll do. You'll make a boob out of any man who'll let you. Give me my rap and let me tell you something. Don't you ever come crawling back to me again because I am through. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Sure, I thought you said you were through. I am. Well, oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Fill them up. All the glasses, sir. All your glasses. <gasps> oh, damn them! I am so glad you brought me here. The food is delicious. And so are the waiters. <laughs> Johnny! Johnny! Oh, where is that darling Sophie? You had a misunderstanding. No, we had a complete understanding. And you are all alone, poor boy. Oh, Tom Tom, I think I left my purse in the taxi. Would you get it for me, please? But, my dear, there must be 5,000 cabs in Paris. You'll find it, Tom Tom. Well, I haven't yet, and it's the third time this week. Oh. <laughs> Your purse, madame. Sure thank her. Oh, I did it for you, poor boy. I saw the sad look in your eye, the hunger on your lips. It was my duty as a woman. All right, drop those lips. <laughs> John, what's the matter with you? Nothing. Every He's time perfect. I leave, <laughs> He's perfect. Every time I leave you alone for ten minutes, I find you gnawing on another girl. Don't you ever buy dinner? <laughs> What was Sophie saying? Sophie's had to say we quarreled. No kidding. Yes. And it worked, huh? What worked? Oh, never mind. You're coming with me. Come on. Wait a minute. Where? Around the corner to Stephanie's party. Oh, no. I have waited a month for this. He's going to have a party with me. Yeah, well, it's been canceled. Go home and read The Love Machine. The lo <laughs> Will you get out of here? Not without you. You're going back to Stephanie. It's Mo! No, it's me! It's mine! It's my turn! Do you realize that little girl's eating your heart out on the count of you? Oh, let her eat. But Stephanie, you mean it? Of course I mean it. I, 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 I thought she and that prince Oh, were... you're pushing her right into his arm. Oh, Huck, you don't know what you're talking about. Look, this kid's gone on you. And now that you've got her going, what you gonna do? Is it up to me? Sure, it's up to you. What kind of game is this you've begun? It was done just for fun. You have neck yes. till you're wrecked. No. Won't you tell her what to expect? Is this to be a case of falling? Glad you fell. Kiss and never tell. Folly and farewell. Oh, stop it. Which is it going to be? Love or gin? Wife or sin? He knows me. Come on, John. Let's begin. Let's go. Let's check W. Tell Judge Tobin I got me another. Yeah, little old guy this time. Found one of them racing cars in the city limits. Maybe it's some sort of a Dodge something or other. Challenger, new Dodge Challenger RT. Got that, David? Of course I'm sure. It's got racing straps, big old 446 back, everything. We'll put them on. Hey, howdy, Judge. Big cute little old guy, a little big in a minute. Wheel of that big old racer. You did. Well, of course I've seen them. Yeah, concealed wipers, dual headlights. What about that shaker hood? That big old 440. Oh, optional. Here, yeah, Cal. Judge Tobin want to talk to you. Hello? Uncle Ralph? Brand new Challenger RT. If you trust your own judgment, you could be Dodge material. Y'all drive careful now, yeah? <laughs> Remember, something simple now. Simple nothing. Now's your chance to knock his eye out. Oh, I couldn't be so cool. How about this way? Oh, no, no, that's all wrong for me. It's not right for my figure. I know. Your grandmother's coronation gown. But I've never worn it. You must wear it tonight for him. Yes, I will. Go quickly, Anna. Here she is, John. This is where we tell the men from the boys. 
Go in there and fool me. <laughs> Stephanie, I want, John, I want to talk no to way. you. I want to talk to you alone, please. I'm dressing for the party. And when you're through? When I'm through, I'm going to the party with Ladislaw. With Ladislaw? What did you want to talk to me about? Nothing. You interrupted my dressing to talk to me of nothing? Dressing, that's it. Why did you sell that gown to Ladislaw? I mean to Sophie. <laughs> this is one night when business is not discussed at Roberta's. May I ask you a personal question then? Of course. Are you going to marry Sophie? Uh, I mean Ladislaw. <laughs> that's my affair. Is that any way to talk to your partner? I don't think it's any of my partner's business. I'm making it my business. Your remark is an impertinence. Well, what's it going to be, a church wedding or city hall? Tell me quick, I hate long engagements. I thought you said she was eating her heart out over me. Well, I also said Phyllis Diller would win the Miss America contest. <laughs> He's going to marry Ladislaw. I'm going. Where? Back to Sarvenka. Oh, the Foreign Legion would be better. You'd have Sundays off. <laughs> that was beautiful, Your Highness. You just delivered John over to Sharvenka. Now, how do you want him ground? Regular, percolator, or drip? <laughs> but I wanted him to stay. That's why I sent him away. What? Huck! A woman always says no when she means yes. Boy, if that's true, I've wasted the best years of my life. <laughs> Are Bring you, him back to the party. Are you kidding? Take him away from Charvanka? Okay, but we may have to blast. <laughs> Charlotte. Um, we've been going together for three years now. Four. Charlotte. Will you be my... Yeah. My... Yeah. Oh, my. It's a gorgeous car. What is it? It's a new Charge Dodger. A Dodge Charger 500. Dynamite. Yeah. What's that? That's the optional Hertz shifter. Elliot? Yeah. Hey, where are the headlights? They're hidden uh, where the bumper loops around the grill. Hey, these are new high back seats. Yeah. See how nice they fit? My name's Sheila. What's yours? Elliot? That's a cute name. Did it really ride smooth, huh, Al? Why don't we find out? Elliot! 1970 Charger 500. If you can cope with a whole new image, you could be Dodge material. for a big surprise because tonight we're going to hear from our best customer, Sharvenka. Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Don't ask me, I won't dance. Don't ask me, I won't dance. My friends with you. Why? My heart won't let my feet do things they should do. Shall we dance? Shall we dance? Shall we dance? I won't dance. I said it. I won't dance. Forget it. I won't let it get to me. Now what? I'm like an ocean wave that's bumped on the shore. I feel so absolutely stomped on the floor. I get too sentimental 
But this feeling isn't purely mental For heaven rest us, I'm an up as best us And that's why I won't dance, why should I? I won't dance, how could I? I won't dance, merci beaucoup Unless you dance the dance that I wanna do sing a little French song for you that I've learned over here, please. Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout bois, je vous la vie. Il me dit et tout mon mot, dit mot de tout la chose. Et ça me fait quelque chose Il est resté dans mon cœur Où n'est pas de bon jour Don't shake C'est là pour moi Dont j'ai connu la croix La croix Ah, say is bone, that's French for this is bone. I would excuse me. I forgot to shake the bottle. I sing in French because in English it's too sad. My song is a blighted romance, unrequited passion. The simple story of love between a man and woman. Back in the days when that was still popular. <laughs> it all happened in the sidewalk cafe. It was there I met her. She flashed a smile that promised much. Her phone number was stenciled on her teeth. <laughs> Then wonder of wonders, she turned and spoke to me. Is this chair occupado, she asked. No, is this chair is empty, Pato, I answered, <laughs> improvising in her native tongue. <laughs> she sat down and said, you think I'm too forward? I said, not at all. I like the way you're built. <laughs> I decided to play it cool. I didn't rush to kiss her hand till I took it out of my pocket. <laughs> She seemed so fragile, so vulnerable. She wore her heart on her sleeve. It was tattooed on her arm with an arrow through it that said, Herman, you're the greatest. <laughs> After dinner, I took her home and she invited me in for a nightcap. I said, what style of furniture is this? She said, Louis the 14th. If I miss one more payment, it goes back to Louis on the 14th. <laughs> I went to hang my coat in the closet and there was a man in there. Of course, I said, who's he? 
She said, oh, that's my sick cousin from Toulouse. He thinks he's a moth. <laughs> she was right. I have a mohair deficiency, he explained, as he took a bite out of my sweater. <laughs> and she snuggled up to me, looked me in the eyes, and bit me in the neck and said, Mo Sherry, we are completely alone. What would you like to do? What rotten luck. Two million girls in Paris, and I had to find one without a television set. <laughs> Have I got a surprise for you? And now let's bring out Stephanie, or should I say, Her Royal Highness, the Princess of Poznan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a wonderful time tonight. Will you excuse me, please? Certainly, Stephanie. May I join you? Of course, Your Highness. I'm sorry it's a chair and not a throne. Where is my stencil? Oh, wait. He's getting a crew cut. Ah. Not now, Zsa, Zsa Who is Zsa, Zsa Just put it right down there and I'll explain the whole thing. Right. I thought you were going back to Sharbanka. Yes. And what will Sophie say to that? Sophie's had her say. We quarreled. What did you quarrel about? Over that dress. It was a rotten trick you played on her. I tried not to let her have it, but she insisted she was very rude to me. You don't seem to like Sophie. No, as a matter of fact, I don't like Sophie. How long have you felt like this? From the moment she announced her engagement to you that day at the opening, and every day since I've seen you together, taking her for rides and ordering lunches for two. Perhaps you think it is fun for me always to be making dresses for other women to wear. Well, it's not. It makes me feel then like... Then why did you marry Ladislaw? I'm not married yet. What's all this princess business? I was born that way. <laughs> My grandmother wore this dress at the last coronation ball at St. Petersburg. What? Ladislaw is my cousin. I don't believe in cousins getting married. Do you? I sure don't, partner. <laughs> partner. The devastating and so far above me I never would care. You were destined for purple, you grown rules. You were fashioned for princess to see. What? What does that mean? Tiny Tim made it. Why can't you? Swinger. A lot of room for a compact, huh? 
No, I mean, what's going on down there? Say, this is nice. You sure this is an economy car? Come on, Ursula, let's get... Daddy, no! 1970 Dart Swinger. If you're looking for a real eye-opening value, you could be Dodge material. Try moving it. Oh! Yep, it's busted. Ladies and gentlemen, this has really been quite a week for us here at Southern Methodist University. And first of all, I want to thank President Willis Tate, the Board of Trustees, his fine faculty, and the magnificent student body. Dean of Arts Kermit Hunter can take a bow for his drama program here at SMU, a project that is very inspiring to young people who are looking for a launching pad towards the theater. To the Chrysler Corporation, I bow for their help in putting on this 90-minute show. This week here on the campus has been a revelation for all of us. You read in the papers and see on television about all the hippies, the demonstrators, the protests. Well, I wish you could have been here with us this past week. These kids here are magnificent, bright, responsive, and responsible. So if you're worried about tomorrow, don't. It's going to be in good hands. We'd like to thank all the people who attended our showing here in Dallas and who have so generously endowed our scholarship trust fund. Of course, you don't have to be in Dallas to do the same thing. Today, colleges need your financial support more than ever. Tuition taxes pay only part of the cost of educating a student. The rest comes from businessmen, foundations, and from you. If you don't have a favorite college, pick one and contribute to it regularly. America will be the better for it, and so will you. Thank you very much for coming. you've enjoyed this 90 minutes of entertainment from Chrysler Corporation, makers of Plymouth, Dodge, Chrysler, Imperial, Dodge Trucks, Simca, and Sunbeam Automobiles. Chrysler Corporation, engineering with care. This is Frank Barton inviting you to stay tuned to the Dean Martin Show, which follows next over most of these same NBC stations.